Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BJ Tech News. And yes, finally, BJ, myself, Bernardo, has finally listened to you guys. And uh, I took some time. And I finally got my KMS, my key management server, back up and running. I'm using server 2008 R2. And the last phase that I left you guys hanging was testing the key management server and making sure it's working. Now, there's a bunch of key points that I got to let you guys know. Uh, and before we start doing this, uh, what you want to, what you need to know actually is that you need to meet certain thresholds. With Windows 7 clients, it won't work until it hits 25 requests from client machines on your floor. If you're making requests from a Windows Server 2008 server, the count is actually 5 for KMS. And Office 2010 is also a count of 5. Okay. Now, how does KMS talk to the clients on the floor? Basically, the service works because it puts an SRV record inside your DNS. So look at my DNS right here. If I go to forward lookup zone and I go into my domain and I go to underscore TCP, you see that there's a record of underscore VLMCS. Now this right here is my KMS. It's pointing into that uh, record. It's actually repointing it. So when clients try to activate itself, it tries to go inside the DNS, find this record. If it's if the record is there, okay, that's one count. But again, you have to take in consideration your machine is not going to activate with your KMS right away. It needs to hit the threshold of the count. Again, if you're trying to do Windows 7 machines, you need at least 25 machines or 25 requests for it to start activating. For server side 2008, for what I've seen, it's a count of five. I've also seen in environments, if you do at least four Windows 7 machines and one server, it starts kicking in the KMS, it starts activating. So. There's a couple of tricks that I, I want to show you guys. And again, uh, I'm using my little cheat sheet. So the cheat sheet will be provided for you guys. There's going to be a link at the comment section so you guys can check it out. Uh, I have a Windows uh, 2008 machine. And this machine is uh, Enterprise 2008. I added into this domain controller. You know, it's not best practice, but I have my KMS with my domain controller. I know it's not best practice. Uh, so let's go into that machine. And as you can see in the machine, uh, this is the computer name. And I try to activate it, but a problem has occurred. Windows tried to activate. What's what's the deal? Now you got to take in consideration that this machine is part of my network. It's trying to authenticate itself or retrieve a license on my network, on my KMS server, before it goes and reaches out to the Windows server. And this is the reason why I received this. Now. There's a command line that you can actually go and enter inside your client machine. And it's this right here. Again, I'm going to be providing the cheat sheet for you guys, so do not worry. So when you hit enter for this, this right here will let you know whether or not your computer is talking to your DNS or is it talking to the uh, record within DNS. Uh, I think I've been having issues with this command. Uh, the, the reason why is because I'm doing everything as a virtual machine. So I don't really have uh, an active DNS uh, configured correctly or DSCP. So most likely if your machine is part of a domain controller and it, it could reach to my can reach to your DNS, uh, you shouldn't have any problems. So another cool command that you could try out is uh, there's a command that you could do within your KMS server. And this command is, it, it will show you what's the status of your KMN, your KMS, okay? Uh, now, the, your KMS server doesn't have like a GUI that you can actually see and manipulate. So there's a command prompt that you guys could actually go into. So again, I will provide this for you. And I hit enter. Now, as you can see, current count is one. Now, every time you do a request inside your network, this count is going to increase by one. All right, guys? Again, understand this, guys. If you have Windows 7 machines and you're trying to get a 
active license with your KMS, you have to have at least 25. Once the current count is 25 and it hits 26 and beyond 26, that's when all your machines on the floor plus the 25 that weren't active are going to get activated automatically. On a server side, 2008, what I've seen, it only takes five machines. I've seen an environment that it only takes seven Windows 7 machines and only one server to activate it in a kickstart. So that's about it, guys. That is how the KMS server works. You got to make sure that you have your server record within DNS pointing to your KMS server. Okay. You got to make sure that your host is able to read your DNS record. Most likely when you try to activate your client machine, you're going to get this error. But don't worry about it because I want you guys to go back into your KMS server and run this command. And if you run the command, you should see a 1. Now, if you want, before you even activate your client, go inside your KMS and run this command beforehand. I guarantee you if you run this command beforehand, you're going to see a count of 0. Go back to your client, try to activate it, come back to this, run the command, and you're going to see a 1. That basically means that your client is talking to your KMS. It just needs to hit the threshold for it to start activating your machines on the floor. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know it took me a while to, to shoot this video out to you guys. But again, uh, I think on the next video I want to do is uh, troubleshooting it. How to troubleshoot it on uh, certain features if it's not activating or uh, what should I do. So hopefully stay tuned for that video and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.